lot of companies are becoming very very picky nowadays for hiring new candidates so you cannot be in such a situation that you do not have a good grasp on dev i used to feel kind of like paranoid that now i have forgotten a lot of things i don't remember the tricks anymore and so on and so forth. time bounded scenario and this specific problem scenario used to teach me a lot of things it's not the most ideal way i believe because you can maybe do better things or you can align things in a slightly more better way you gave the contest you were able to solve two questions great the third question that you were not able to solve let's say when you saw the answer key then that question was from binary search you have solved let's say 30 40 odd questions at least of medium difficulty in binary search maybe you are not perfect but again you have four years three years to actually complete this process altogether well let's say you read a question there is a good chance that you might not be able to code it code the same problem five months from now but at least you will remember the trick that there was some trick that you used to do something re related to that when you're doing dev it's not like you have to learn mobile also web also data science also ml also focus on one thing try to get master of one thing so that at least you are able to apply for those kind of jobs before moving forward i would like to tell you about our brand new offering at algo camp around the advanced spring boot backend development cohort so we were getting a lot of requests to actually launch our next iteration of the spring boot cohort and here we are this one is far more bigger and better than the last one and trust me if you are somebody who is looking to start their journey in the world of Spring Boot in the backend ecosystem or maybe you already know some things about backend development maybe in Spring Boot or maybe in some other tech stack this is going to be a one stop solution for you we are going to talk about everything from the absolute beginner level to the advanced level in Spring Boot we are going to talk about how exactly you can set up your backend ecosystem and backend projects in Spring Boot we are going to take a microservice driven architecture and build different different project including an Uber app including Airbnb app payment wallet like Paytm wallet app and many more we are going to talk about how exactly microservices can actually communicate with each other in synchronous and asynchronous fashion. We are going to see a lot of interesting microservices pattern like CQRS pattern, Saga pattern for distributed transaction, how you can implement Saga pattern through orchestration and choreography, how Saga pattern is going to help you with respect to the implementation if you compare that with two-phase commit, how you can implement each one of them, what is the outbox pattern, how exactly event sourcing is going to work, how you can integrate Kafka for your event sourcing and what not. We are going to see so many many interesting database concepts like how exactly no SQLs are internally implemented using LSM trees, what are write ahead logs, how you can replicate your databases, how you can shard your databases, how you can design a good database schema and what not. All the topics that we are going to cover must be listed in front of you on the screen here. What I can say is that this course is going to be one stop solution to become an advanced backend engineer in Spring Boot. This is definitely going to demand some good time commitment from all the students who are interested but trust me this is going to be one hell of a ride. So what are you waiting for do check out the link in the description section below and read the complete end-to-end -end syllabus of what we are going to cover in the spring boot cohort you can actually use the coupon spring 2025 to get maximum possible discount on the course and i'm really excited to see you guys in the cohort right do check out the link description section below and let's get back to the video how to manage data structures and algorithms with development this is one of those questions that a lot of college students actually do ask if you are somebody who is in college who has a lot of things from college to actually do and you are actually aiming for getting a job in top prod based companies and top prod based startups this is a very normal question that can come to your mind that how exactly we should try to manage data structures and algorithms the practice that we need to do for dsa along with dev in this particular video i'm going to talk about some of the thought processes that you can keep in your mind and a few opinions from my side that what are a few set of things that actually everyone should try to do in order to ensure that they have a good balance between data structures and algorithms along with the dev. In college, you will find a lot of people who are just focused on one. Some people might be only crazy about doing DSA problems, doing competitive programming. Some people you will see that only are focusing on the development aspect. They don't care about much around things around lead code, DSA and all. They only want to focus on projects and project, build, project building and whatnot. On the other hand, there will be still some people who will be able to balance out both the things very well. If you ask me, I was kind of like from the third category. I always try to ensure that I'm able to have a good balance between DSA and Dev. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about my opinions and I believe if you will watch this video till the end, you will get a lot of good ideas on how you can manage DSA with Dev. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing that we are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead. So let's just start. See, the first and the foremost thing is 
try to have a plan the plan that you are going to prepare can be of different different types but this plan should ensure that you are giving good amount of time to both of the things anything skewed is not going to help you a lot because to be very honest nowadays the hiring is kind of like very tricky a lot of companies are becoming very very picky nowadays for the hiring for hiring new candidates so you cannot be in such a situation that you do not have a good grasp on dev you do not have a good grasp on dsa and you have the other one you cannot be into that i believe having a good balance is going to be something that is going to ensure that first you have an edge during your hiring process second having a balance between both of these is technically going to ensure that you are going to become a good software engineer see good software engineer is responsible for solving problems and building products out of it so technically the solving problem aspect you have to facilitate from the dsa part and building products aspect you have to facilitate from the dev part so talking about the plan what can be the plan that you can follow if you ask me what plan sanket you used to follow i had a very straightforward plan i used to make sure that i do some amount of dsa daily that can be easy problems medium problem hard problem but this was kind of like a daily thing it's kind of like that daily walk that you take for 30 minutes with your friends or with your family right it's kind of like a daily routine thing what i used to think that like let's say if due to some reasons i do not do dsa for like 2 weeks or 3 weeks then i generally used to feel that i am now out of touch i used to feel kind of like paranoid that now i have forgotten a lot of things i don't remember the tricks anymore and so on and so forth that's why i used to ensure that maybe some competitive related problems or let's say some simpler lead code problems or maybe some new data structures to explore right let's say segment trees fen victories whatever thing is there i used to learn something daily so i used to allocate 1 to 2 hours daily and i used to ensure that daily we are able to solve some kind of like a problem keep one thing in mind the interview problems are generally relatively easier than very hard competitive programming problems so if your goal is correspondingly around that so make sure that your bigger amount or i would say bigger focus is going on problems that are available on lead code to manage dev what i used to do was i used to participate in a lot of hackathons now what hackathons can actually help you is in hackathons generally you have a team so you will be 3 to 4 people then in a team you are going to build a product now when you are building a product in a team then the scope of that product is slightly bigger when you make that alone also in hackathons you cannot just watch a video and make a product you have real life statements you have real life problem statements and you have some certain amount of time you cannot just keep on making that making that project forever in a certain amount of time you have to complete that project now this time bounded scenario and this specific problem scenario used to teach me a lot of things and who knows if you win the hackathon then maybe you can actually add a line in your resume as well along with the project so this was one thing that i used to do that every month or two month we used to participate in some kind of hackathon because when you have to participate in a hackathon a lot of time go in the idea situation application and then start you start making the product so already some part of my month or two months used to go in the development aspect along with that i used to ensure one simple thing that every semester i was involved in some kind of a internship thing now internships are great way to actually do a lot of real life dev projects right so i used to ensure that starting from my third semester every vacation that we have winter vacation summer vacation and if possible maybe during the semester as well used to sign up for a lot of internship used to give a lot of interviews for internship try to crack them and then try to do internships at these small startups the best part about small startups is that they have very high scope of work and they have very less people to do it so you can own a lot of things and you will be poc of a lot of things so that was something that used to keep me on track on my dev perspective as well now keeping all of these things aside this was what i used to do but it's not the most ideal way i believe because you can maybe do better things or you can align things in a slightly more better way for example i knew a lot of people who used to have kind of like a weekend sprint all together like every weekend from like friday second half saturday and sunday they only used to focus on dev they used to have one big project that they are making for let's say 2 to 3 months and every weekend they used to pick up one feature and end to end finish it no matter what kind of like a hackathon within themselves so this was also something that a lot of people used to follow so you can try to prepare the split if you want to do the dev work also daily you can do that but i believe that involves a lot of context switching because you have your college work as well or office work as well then you have to do dsa as well and then you have to do dev as well that involves a lot of context switching maybe you can decide some days that okay every friday saturday sunday or let's say every thursday saturday sunday is something that i only focus on the dev part this ensures that you are splitting equal amount of time in both of them then in order to manage dsa in a slightly more better way i believe you can try to have a good study plan this study plan can ensure a couple of things for example now let's say every two weeks you give one contest that contest can be on lead code code forces anywhere 
Now you gave the contest, you were able to solve two questions. Great. The third question that you were not able to solve, let's say when you saw the answer key, then that question was from binary search. So now what you can try to ensure that for next two weeks, you are going to only solve varied problems on binary search. Now, what I believe a lot of people make a mistake is that they try to solve a lot of easy questions. See, the problem with easy questions is that the amount of easy questions are too high. You will spend a lot of time just doing easy question and then you will be exhausted. A rather great strategy would be to start directly with medium problem. Just read some theory, maybe watch some tutorials on YouTube to see two to three problems, how people are actually solving. And I believe start with medium problems altogether. If you're already giving contest, that means you are already aware about a lot of things around programming, right? So try to solve medium problems altogether. Once you have solved good amount of medium problem, try to shift to harder problems. Because if you will not do this activity, there is a good chance that you will never reach to the hard problems. You will only be stuck between easy to easy medium. Right. If you start from the median problems, I believe they are going to teach you a lot of things. There is a good chance that you won't be able to make a lot of uh, median problems. You won't be able to end to end solve a lot of median problems, but they are going to teach you new tricks that I have seen a lot of time. Easier problems are not able to teach that much. And slowly and steadily, what you can see is that once you have, let's say, spent two weeks around in binary search, you have solved, let's say, 30, 40 odd questions, at least of medium difficulty in binary search. Next time you will see slightly a bit more comfort with binary search. Maybe you're not perfect, but again, you have four years, three years to actually complete this process altogether. So start picking up problems altogether. And don't worry if let's say you are picking a problem that involves additional concepts as well. Don't worry on that. Read about those concepts, understand those concepts on the go and then move ahead. For example, let's say you are solving a hard binary search problem and that hard binary search problem is eventually clubbed with a segmentary solution. Now you don't know about segmentary. Focus on the fact that, okay, if you don't know about segmentary, this is a good time to learn about segmentary. Learn about segmentary basics, try to code a segmentary, have some two, three basic problems, easy questions solved on segmentary, and then jump back to your original question that you were trying to solve with binary search along with segmentary. This kind of a process is going to ensure that you cover vast majority of problems with varied difficulty altogether. One interesting thing that I used to do in order to manage my DSA along with dev was that during my commute time to my college, I used to commute uh, through metro or some very rarely, but sometimes with cab as well. What I used to ensure that I used to read some problems as well. See, if you have solved 300, 400 questions, then your muscle memory already knows basic set of algorithms altogether. So sometimes it is good to actually read questions as well. This will actually help you prepare a good breadth of problems because at, when let's say you read a question, there is a good chance that you might not be able to code it, code the same problem five months from now. But at least you will remember the trick that there was some trick that used to do something re related to that. So at least in an interview or in a contest, you will be having some pathway to start with. So reading is also a good habit considering that you have already solved 300, 400 odd good questions earlier. Otherwise, you will start mocking things up. Don't mock things up. Try to explore problems and try to explore the tricks. Along with that, when you are doing dev, ensure one simple thing that try to pick those kind of projects to build that have some engineering problem to solve. The moment you will try to solve engineering problems, you will see the application of DSA in your dev projects as well. This is a very important trick. For example, let's say you try to make an Uber-like project. In Uber-like project, let's say if you want to search all the drivers nearby, then start figuring out how exactly Uber does that or how exactly a basic cab application might do this. So you will figure out that, okay, there is a data structure called as quad tree. Now go to lead code, try to code a quad tree, make some four, two, three problems on quad tree. Then try to understand what are the problems with quad tree. Then you will come up to the topic of geohashing. For understanding geohashing, you will realize, okay, you need to understand hashing. Learn hashing, solve problems on hashing, and then see what geohashing is. With geohashing, try to see what all libraries are there that can help you implement geohashing or quad tree, and then integrate that in your project. In this way, you will be able to see the applications of algorithmic situations in your end-to-end -end project. It's not like dev doesn't involve any kind of a DSA. It's just that very complex problems are there. And if you will try to tackle those problems, you will definitely some essence of DSA coming up altogether. These are some good things that you can do. Also try to make a study plan maybe on platforms like LeetCode or there are a lot of calendar platforms on which you can make a dedicated plan. Just ensure that you have good focus time. You don't context switch a lot. When you're doing dev, it's not like you have to learn mobile also, web also, data science also, ML also. Focus on one thing. Try to get master of one thing so that at least you are able to apply for those kind of jobs. And once you have an internship, once you have a job, during that job, maybe you can explore your next interesting uh, topic, let's say around ARVR or ML or whatnot. So try to collaborate things in this particular way. Also, one important thing, 
try to make sure that you are telling your progress to somebody if you have somebody to track you if somebody is actually following that okay last week you were able to solve these many questions what's the status today this keeps you kind of like in check around your progress and you will be able to uh, kind of like feel yourself that okay this week also i have to make some progress so try to find some peers in our cohorts at uh, algo camp in the lambda cohort or the spring boot cohort we try to actually encourage people that try to make groups and make projects in which you are collaborating with each other this gives you kind of like a sense of working in a team and also keeps you on track because other people are also watching your progress so it's the the learning is not just about learning in yourself in an isolated environment if you can have a team if you can try to ensure that okay somebody is keeping a check on you that's also going to definitely help you so all of these things i believe used were some of those things that i along with my friends used to follow maybe you have some other way to follow along with that but in a nutshell i believe if you are doing internships and hackathons along with a daily or a let's say weekly sprint of dsa things are not going to go out of hand and you will be having everything in control once your final interviews for internships and companies your full time job companies actually come so let me know in the comment section what are some of the things that you actually do in order to maintain data structures and algorithm practice along with software development and let me know what are your thoughts about my suggestions i would be really happy to answer all of your uh, thoughts in the comment section below that being said let's wrap this particular video here we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to talk about a lot of more interesting things about tech and career till then take care bye bye i'm sanket singh signing off